It's upgrade time. It's Christmas in September. Holy. So. Holy buckets. That's insanely heavy. Look at that. You're actually going bath backwards. You're gonna get a lot more done a lot faster. Is that bro logic? It might be. Yeah, it's actually a little bit dangerous. Holy crap! Beef. Beef. Look at this work? curb guard. Can't, you're not even gonna be able to lift your plow up. <laughs> Bit of a difference, huh? God, that is heavy duty. This is like night and day. Definitely an upgrade. There's no vegetable tation on there. Drives me nuts, Todd. I really don't like it. I don't know, do that with your hand again. That really looked. <laughs> I've ran Western equipment for over 15 years and overall they've actually been a really good snow plow except for their cutting edges and I fix that today. But this upgrade that you're going to see isn't any average ordinary upgrade. This is like a 400% upgrade because the pieces of component that I'm actually uning, using, uning, using have a 400% more carbide than your average cutting edge. They are the cutting edges that go on the commercial snowplow trucks that you see clearing the highways. And I'm gonna show you that. And also at the end of this video, I'm going to take you along and show you some of the equipment and gear that I make sure is in every single one of my plow trucks before I send them out. So I wasted any more time, let's do this thing. That right here is Western's heaviest duty curb guard and cutting edge that we just installed. And what you're looking at right now is winter equipment's just standard curb guard. Okay, this is tight. There may be a little rubbing involved to get up. No bad. Look at that wing. You see that? Oh no, you're good. Look at that precision, guys. Yeah, you want to turn to your left. Look at that. Freaking rock stuff. Let's see if I rubbed it off. Nope. I kept my short iron powdered coat uh, looking no, no. slick. Let's see a little, see There's this. no veg Look vegetable tation. Look at, that. Look at that. There's no vegetable tation on there. Well, no, I just wiped it off. Now prior to the season starting, we install all of the equipment and leave it on for a minimum of two weeks where we run it almost daily and that just gets all of the bugs out because I've had guys call me up while it's snowing for the first event in a panic because they don't have a piece of equipment ready, they can't get it hooked up or something else bad has happened. This kind of prevents all of that from happening. No, the passenger side wing is loose. It keeps doing the floppy crappie on me, so I gotta get that repaired because that cylinder's out. Yeah, it's actually a little bit dangerous. So, you can drive the Jeep. Now, you're gonna have some guys say, well, that's hard on the truck, leaving it on for an extended period of time. And there is some validity to that, but I'm going to counter that by saying, we have a company policy stating that anytime the truck is parked and not moving, plow is resting on the ground, taking all of the weight on the truck. So there shouldn't be any more use and abuse on the truck than if it's just sitting there without a snow plow attached at all. The problem is, is when guys park their truck and then leave the plows in the air. When they do that, an extended weight sitting on the truck can be a deficit to the truck. So anytime that we're parking them, we just drop the plow down. All right guys, so this pull plow, I'm gonna tell you a little story. One of our accounts, it used to take two guys nine hours to snow plow. Four and a half hours for a skid loader, four and a half hours for a truck. We put one pull plow on it and we get that same account done in two and a half hours. So the labor savings on that is insane, but if you snow plow by the hour, you're actually going bath backwards because you're gonna get a lot more done a lot faster and not necessarily get paid the same as you did with one of the little tiny baby front plows that are out there. And I say that and I actually mean it because a back plow will beat a front plow any day of the week. In fact, we don't even bother using this one hardly at all except for a massive snow event. 
It's upgrade time. I'm sick of changing cutting edges, so I'm going with this company because these guys actually supply cutting edges to the DOT. If it's good enough to put on the dump trucks and commercial vehicles that snowplow our streets, it's good enough for me. Oh my God, this stuff is heavy. Okay, holy crap. This stuff is heavy, dude. I smashed my finger trying to pick the other box. What are you doing? Are you breaking stuff over there? Yes. No. like solenoids and stuff. Todd, Todd says he's a mechanic. Should be a regular gas engine. I'll fix that up. All right, so we got to check the oil and check the connections too. Probably put some lithium dye, uh, some lithium grease on them. Okay. It's called dielectric grease, and it's a special grease made just for electrical fittings. Now I know what it is, I just can't seem to say it in this video. It's actually lithium, is it dioid? Is that the right way of saying it? Dilithium crystals. No, it's dilithium. It's grease for electrical fittings. But we'll go through all the fittings where the snowplow connects in on the snowplow itself. So let me be very specific here, guys. Right here, we're gonna pull this apart, grease them up, this one as well, and then we're gonna go back around to the back end, and especially into the trailer hitch, even though we're not gonna be using the trailer hitch, but that's why we're gonna be doing it. So drop, when you do this, you drop the snow plow down, and then you get grease into the trailer pins, because uh, we've gotta keep it from rusting when we're not gonna be using it for long term. Now what you're gonna see is a completely different system and it's made by Winter Equipment, but it fits onto my Western snowplow and they'll fit onto other snowplows as well. Now the differences that you're going to notice is the curb guards are insanely heavy duty. All of the components that come with the system are grade eight bolts versus your standard grade five that comes with the Western heaviest duty system out there. Now with all of these heavier duty components comes a bigger price tag. Now I paid approximately approximately $700 to $750 for my complete Western heavy duty system with curb guards and this system is going to be around $200 more than that. But here's why I went with this system. I'm on my third year with my Western snowplow and I'm on my second cutting edge with that snowplow. So you got, you got the plow blocked up, right Todd? Right, right behind you? Yeah, okay. Safety first, sir. Safety. So let's see if there's, all right, so this is, this is my snow plow naked, but let's see how much wears on that blade. We plowed away at one time. Paint's not even scraped off, is it? A little bit, a little tiny bit. Yeah, a little bit. Not too bad though, right? All right. All right, so last spring I ended up putting two new cutting edges, one on each one of my Western MVP3s, and for this video I'm actually going to be removing almost a brand new cutting edge to install this system so that I can do a side by each comparison over the course of the next few years and report back to you. I'm trying to give you a video on my initial impressions, but I want to do another video later on down the line where we do the test of time to see how well these things hold up. So if you're wondering why I'm removing a brand new cutting edge, it's for you guys. You're welcome. All right, let's, see. let's see what we got in the boxes. Look at all these boxes for one snowplow. That's not even all of it. We still got more inside. So what do we got? What are they included? New bolts. Let me, hand me one of those bolts once. I want to see if those are grade A. Western's bolt, winter equipment's bolt. Western's bolt, this is how you tell the grades on a bolt. Three slash marks, one. Let's see, I want a better bolt so these guys can see it. You know, the higher the grade, the stronger the bolt. Three slash marks on a bolt means it's a grade five bolt, which is a median carbon steel bolt. Six slash marks on a bolt means that it's a grade eight which is the heaviest bolt that you can get. 
Which brings me to another point. Why do they gotta make things more confusing than they have to be? Why don't they just put five slash marks for a grade five bolt and eight slash marks for a grade eight bolt to make it easy? Holy so, Jesus. They sell so Tell me about it. <laughs> That'd be cool if that was just one. Dude, that's that's insanely heavy. Like you grab that thing and it like stops you in your trap. It's heavy. Just, if it's just yeah. one in there. I apologize for making fun of you earlier. You're not oh. all of these are heavy. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the thickness? Oh, well, it looks like the same thickness, doesn't it? A little bit thicker. No way. Where's your other Holy thing? crap. It's right over there. Right alongside the toolbox. There's no way that's the same. I hope we don't have to drill those. Okay, so. Holy buckets. Look at look at that. And that's this is their thick one, right? We had these this put is, on. These are half inch, right? That's their thickest one. Yeah, that's the one they. Uh, that is their thick one. Yep. So, uh, these. so these weighed 33 pounds. Let's find out how much. Oh, those got to be more. The winter bigger. equipment weighs, right? 33 compared to. All right, here. I'm not stepping on that scale. I'll step on the scale. So I was here. You hold this one. All right. So one of these units weighs 30. Five pounds? Three. 33 pounds, six, 41 pounds. 41 to 33. So 10 pounds heavier. 10 pounds. About eight pounds. 30. Doesn't work if you just So that's out. almost 30%. No, I don't, I don't really want that pressure on one point. Um, that's almost 25, 30% heavier in the same blade. Yeah. And that's Western's heaviest, compared to Western's heaviest one. Not. Not the one you guys are gonna get on your snow plows, which is their lighter one. So actually what I'm referring to is Western's standard snow plow comes with their standard blade. But then you can have an option of upgrading and getting a heavier duty blade, which is what we did on our second blade. So the blade that comes just stock with a brand new snow plow is actually much lighter than the heavier duty version, which is what we're comparing this winter equipment blade to. Sounds kind of complicated. But it's not really kind of, All we're doing is comparing winter equipment stock blade to Western's heaviest blade. That's what I'm trying to say. Nope. These are, holy crap! Holy! Oh wow. <laughs> these are the curb guards. Oh, what? oh, these are your middle. That's the middle. Yeah, I'm like, how the Look at this work? curb guard. Oh yeah, those are... Dude, gonna, feel that. So feel that. Just grab it. Yeah. Your plow's gonna... Can't, you're not even gonna be able to lift your plow up. <laughs> That's nuts! Well, that makes that sense. That is so heavy. Good morning. Whoa. Morning, Xander. Whoa. Tell me about it. It's gotta be like this, what? though. Dude, yeah, you're on the wrong side, I think. Yeah, I think so. Because look at all that, how thick that is. Put that up once. That's the curb guard. These are these are insane how heavy duty these snowplow this snowplow system is. There you go. God, that is crazy. Yeah, that should last a long time, man. God, that is just beef. That's just beef, man. I like that. You got that? That's gonna wear nice and it'll cut the curb. It, it, that'll work good along a curb. That's crazy. Cause you, you just run it right along. You're not gonna hop the curb. Bit of a difference, huh? There's no comparison. It's almost like a joke. Beef. Beef. So They're Xander's also... going to teach us the hardness test. Listen carefully. Don't talk. Listen for a ting and a clank, right? What? A, this one's this dull. Not... Yeah. You can definitely hear a difference. It's got more of a chime to it at the end. So what does that mean? I can't remember exactly, but it should be harder. So the harder it is, the more of a chime it'll have? I think so. Is that right? Yeah. Comments down below. I could be wrong. We don't know. Xander's got, Xander's surprised me more than once now, but you tell me. Is that? Bro logic. Is that bro logic? It might be. God, that is heavy duty. I'm just, I love, quality i love upgrades where it's just like blows you out of the water where it's not like a little bit you know what i mean mm -hmm. it's this is like night and day that, that is definitely an upgrade 
Hey, Todd put three <laughs> we said new car. Put three bolts Todd in. Todd put three bolts in. Oh, and he says, oh, hey, there you go. Yeah, put right the bolts the right on the hood. Right. Hey, it's just a work there truck. There you go, bro. Todd. Yeah. It's work truck. You know what you should do is you should climb. <laughs> oh, this drives me nuts. Drives me nuts, Todd. Hey, oh, he, Todd got a new car. I know where I'm going to put these bolts. All right, let's hear the alarm horn. Ooh, isn't that cute? It's so pretty. It sounds like Herbie. If you do that twice, it's like a little courteous knock. Courteous? See what happens when you hang out with me too much? You no longer talk good no more. It's courtesy. Just when you guys thought you were done, I bring out another box, but here's the bad news. I forgot to bring that up. That actually has to go on before the blade goes on. I really don't like you. I really don't like you. Are you kidding? Whoa. <laughs> There's something else in there. That's not good. Oh! oh. They're just close. Gotcha. They're really tall. There you go. Oh, I just got a tall set. Give me the tall one. You want the tall one? I want to see where I'm going. I want them bad boys. <laughs> I want them bad boys to scrape car ramps when I go under them. This is just going to be full of all the all the most snow plowy things you need. <laughs> just this monstrosity with your massive light bar and your pull plow and your gnarly... What are they called? I don't know. Do that with your hand again. That really looked... Warning, your body and your mind. Alright, so here's some of the basics that you should carry with you every time you go out snow plowing. Pliers and wrenches in case you have to do any infield repairs. Number two is extra hoses and hydraulic cylinders if you've got the room to carry them. Number three is a phone charger. Number four is an extra set of clothes, but it's not necessarily for yourself. It's for anybody else that happens to be on your crew. Because I've seen it happen more than once where a person's fueling up a skid loader or a loader and the fuel blows back on top of them. Now that guy can't work covered in diesel fuel and if you send him home, what's going to happen is that guy's going to get home and then get tired before he gets back to your site. It's easier if you have the extra set of clothes that he can change right there and wash up and keep working. And last but not least is the right flashlight because I'm sorry to say this to you guys, a good flashlight is almost mandatory because you're going to end up using it way more often than you want to. And here's the one that I always carry with me. I don't even know what they call that light. I'll be totally honest with you. Don't know. But I'm going to put a link to it in the description down below. I would not go snow plowing without this LED searchlight. I wouldn't go without it. I just, I would not go snow plowing without this thing. Because you can set it just like this. Rotate the head, you got a spotlight, you got a searchlight, and you got a spot searchlight combo. Your battery's rechargeable, it lasts all night long. We use it time and time again. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I'm trying to prepare you because it's way better than a regular flashlight. What do you think? You've used it. Mm -hmm. I actually really like it. Yeah. I've, have you, do you, is there a light you like better though? Not in that price range. Well, is it a yet. super expensive one? Yeah. There's the Surefire. Ever heard of Surefire? Uh -uh. Something like that. And they're just super bright. They're like regular sized flashlights. They're, but they're like super expensive. <laughs> but normally. that's a flashlight. Yeah. See, that's what that's I like about that thing. That thing will just way? stand up on its own. It'll bend. It'll bend either way. It's gonna bend with the wind. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> giant, gaudy snowplow markers. Frick yeah. All right, guys. Well, I hope you guys have an awesome snow season. Let me know what you think of this video. And also, I've been looking at buying a brand new pickup truck just to specifically set up for snow plowing. And I'm thinking about putting together a video on the research that I've done between Dodge, Ford, Chevy, and GMC, and some of the things that I found out that I didn't know before I started to go into this thing because a lot of people have been coming out of the woodworks, giving me advice, telling me things that I didn't realize were true. And so if that's something that you guys want me to do, just let me know and I'll start working on a video for you guys on how to properly set up a snowplow truck. That's what I got for you today, guys. God bless you guys, and have an awesome snow season. <laughs> and go get them. <laughs>